Sea of Thieves can be a quite daunting game for brand new players. Previously on the channel, I've made guides for both new players and old. However, in today's video, I'm going to be covering what new players should look to be doing on their first days on the seas. You've just spent your hard earned money on Sea of Thieves and booted it up. I'm going to pretend for the sake of this video that you've completed the Maiden Voyage, which essentially teaches you the core control mechanics of the game. I'm also going to pretend that you've completed the initial tutorial in the main world, completing your first treasure map, Dig, and I would do this as soon as possible or these prompts will haunt you until you complete it. Majority of you I'm sure are going to be starting out your Sea of Thieves journey solo, and that's fine. My initial bit of advice for you new players, getting your hands on the game alone is to not jump into open crew. This can be a way of joining random ships across the sea, meeting new people. But overall, the likelihood of you doing anything productive in these sessions is minimal. And that is why I'm going to focus on optimizing your solo adventures. The main goal of the game is to get your pirate to pirate legend, earning new cosmetics and gold along the way. In order to do this, you're going to need to level up three of the main trading companies within the game to level 50 by selling items of loot to their respective company. For the purposes of this video we're going to ignore the reapers faction as they are somewhat the pvp faction of sea of thieves and tag your boat with a beacon visible to all other players and the hunter's call being the fishing faction of the sea this should be something you can do every now and then to pass the time instead we're going to focus on the gold hoarders order of souls and the merchant alliance the first faction to concentrate on would be the gold hoarders this is going to be one of the easiest factions to level up at first, thanks to the addition of sea forts. Sea forts are Spanish fortresses located around the Sea of Thieves, which allow players to take on waves of phantoms to unlock a treasury and get some great starting loot for any new player. These forts can be done in under 5 minutes, especially with the use of a pistol with its fast reload time and ability to one shot enemies. This will not only teach you accuracy with your weapons, but get you some high tier loot for you to sell to each company. Chests and trinkets go to the gold hoarders, skulls go to the order of souls, and crates and commodities go to the merchant alliance. At these forts you're going to find more gold hoarder loot than anything else, so once you've completed enough of these forts, you should see your reputation increase a lot. Once the reputation has increased to rank 15, you will be able to purchase the emissary flag for this faction. This is a one-time purchase and allows you to vote up the flag on the emissary table each time you log into a server. Emissary flags allow you to sell loot for an increased profit and reputation. This is done by collecting more loot over your session for this company until you reach a maximum grade being grade 5. This applies a 2.5 times multiplier to all gold and reputation earned for the respective company. However, if you have a Reaper 5 on your server, these ships can actually see your boat located on the map due to the emissary flag, so tread carefully. Once you reach level 40 in the Gold Hoarders, I would advise you start looking at completing bolts. These will now start to drop golden keys rewarding players with higher tier loot. If you want to follow another guide on how to do these more efficiently past level 40, I would recommend checking out my Gold Hoarder Max Level Guide on the channel. Once you've reached level 50 in gold hoarders, and maybe a while before this, you should have enough gold to purchase your very own ship. This allows you to start selling loot to the sovereigns, which speed up selling significantly, as you don't have to carry your loot around the outpost, as they will deliver the loot for you. This will be increasingly helpful for the next faction, the Order of Souls. By now, thanks to the sea forts, you should be in high enough level to purchase the emissary flag for the Order of Souls and start earning the bonuses here. This is one of the more limited companies to rank up, which is why I recommend following my Order of Souls max level guide on my channel. You can find all of these useful links down in the description of the video. This guide essentially tells you the most efficient way to farm the Devil's Roar Order of Souls voyages to level up in the fastest way possible. Now it's time to go ahead and make yourself a cup of tea jimmies, because things just got a whole lot more relaxing. The Merchant Alliance is one of the easiest companies to level out with very minimal effort. It gives you many different options in terms of ranking up, from lost shipment voyages, 
to cargo runs, to commodities, they have it all. Just make sure to purchase that emissary flag so you can earn grade 5 reputation. The quickest way to rank up the Merchant Alliance would be Lost Shipment Voyages. If you want a guide on efficiently completing those, again I have a guide on my channel. However, if you just want to relax and take a break from all of the gruelling tasks you've been doing, grab yourself some cargo run voyages and balance that on top of running commodities between outposts. If you need help planning your route, best way to do this would be the Merfolk's Lullaby website, which I will link in the description. All of this being said, you can now take a walk over to the Masked Stranger in any tavern across the sea and solidify yourself amongst the pirate legends of the sea where the grind starts all over again. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, check out the other videos on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.